Hello guys, what's up? This is me, Sir Ernest, and today we will have an example related to multiple expansion. Here the problem reads, A pure dipole P is situated at the origin pointing in the Z direction. Letter A, what is the force on a point charge Q at A00 using the Cartesian coordinate system? Now, for example, this is our Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, so let's say this is x, this is y, so that this is z. Okay, and then let's choose one point along the x-axis to identify this point. So let's say this point. We're in this point. Uh, this is A. Okay. And this is where our Q is. So in this case, the point that we're talking about here is A0, 0. zero. Now, in spherical coordinate system, we know that this is your theta, and therefore, the uh, at this point, the unit vectors r hat and theta hat are directed as follows. This is r hat, and this is theta. So in this case, at this point, r hat is equal to x hat, while theta hat is equal to negative z hat. So r hat and theta hat are two of the three coordinates of spherical coordinate system, while x and z hat are your Cartesian unit vectors. Now, we also recall that, uh, we also uh, see that at this point, R is equal to A, while theta is equal to pi over 2. And then, to complete everything in spherical coordinate system, phi is equal to 0. So that means, if you're going to recall again, the electric field due to a pure dipole okay this is given by e dipole which is only a function of the r and theta coordinates in spherical coordinate system and this is equal to p over 4 pi epsilon r cube times 2 cosine theta r hat plus sine theta theta hat okay so from here we can now identify the following Number one is the X component. The X component, uh, the R, sorry, the R component of your electric field. So this R component of your electric field, ER, is given by P times 2 times cosine theta divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r cube. So plug in all the values here. This is equal to 2p cosine pi over 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught a cube which is equal to 0. 
because this is equal to 0. On the other hand, the theta component, e theta, will be p sine theta over 4 pi epsilon naught r cubed. And plugging in r equal to a and theta equal to pi over 2, we have p times sine pi over 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught a cube which is equal to p over 4 pi epsilon naught a cube okay so therefore the electric field is now equal to p over 4 pi epsilon naught a cube theta hat and because theta hat is negative z hat so therefore uh, this is negative p over 4 pi epsilon naught a cube z hat which gives us the force on this point charge which is q e and this is equal to negative q p over 4 pi epsilon naught a cube z hat okay in other words the force on this particle is directed downward along the z axis okay so let's move on to the next question so here the question is what is the force if the particle is at zero zero eight okay so again we have our let's say this is our z and this time we're going to reorient our coordinate axis as follows so this is where i choose our positive x-axis so that the y-axis is toward the toward you okay so this is our new point mm, this is at zero zero a so this is where our q is so from here we can set that r will still be equal to a but theta would be equal to zero as well as p is equal to zero okay from here we can also identify the x at uh, the r hat and x hat uh, r hat and theta hat so in this case our r hat will be in this direction and theta hat will be in this direction so therefore r hat will be equal to z hat and theta hat will be equal to x hat okay so again the r component of your electric field will be equal to 2p cosine theta which is 0 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught a cube because cosine 0 is 1 so this is now equal to 2p over 4 pi epsilon a cube on the other hand e theta or the theta component of your electric field is p sine theta which is 0 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught 
a cube which is equal to 0 because sine theta is equal to 0. So therefore, the electric field vector will now be equal to 2p over 4 pi epsilon naught a cube r hat. Since r hat is equal to z hat, therefore we can rewrite, we can replace r hat with z hat. So as you see, the electric field at this point is also pointing along the z-axis and it's directed upward whereas earlier if this is our point uh, a0 zero, zero, the electric field points along the negative z direction so this is your theta hat okay so therefore this gives us the force which is equal to Q times E. So therefore, this is 2QP divided by 4 pi epsilon naught E cube Z. Okay. Now, Let's move on to our last item of the problem. Letter C. How much work is done? Uh, how much work does it take to move Q from A00 to 00A? Okay, so that means we're going to allow our particle to move from this point to this point. Okay. So this path is just any arbitrary path. And we know that the work done okay, in an electric field is just equal to Q, where Q is the charge, times the potential difference, Vf minus Vi. Or simply, sorry, V, uh, yes, Vf minus Vi. So this is the work done against the electric field. And this is equal to Q delta V. Again, uh, this is the work done as you go against the electric field. This is not the work done by the electric field, but this is the work done against the electric field. That's why the charge is positive uh, the, the sign is positive okay so therefore the work done will now be equal to q because our charge is small q and the magnetic field at uh, the uh, electric potential v at zero zero a minus v at a zero zero so here we take note of the potential due to a dipole which is r theta and this is equal to p cosine theta over 4 pi epsilon r squared okay so therefore the work done you know, be equal to Q times P cosine 0 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught A squared because R is A and theta is 0 at this point minus P oh, sorry, at this point, sorry, this point and then P times cosine pi over 2 at this point divided by 4 pi epsilon naught a squared 
which gives us the final form where the work done is now equal to QP over 4 pi epsilon naught A squared. So remember that cosine pi over 2 is 0, cosine 0 is 1. Okay, so this is the amount of work to be done in order for our charge Q to move from this point to this point. So this is the work done against electric field. So this work done must be done by an external force. Okay. So this ends our discussion on problem 3.33. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.